Hello um, and welcome to the Discover Cork um, Schools Heritage Project uh, to the online uh, award ceremony. Um, we are, I suppose, saddened, the team is saddened that it's online and it's virtual because usually every year there's always a, a fab event in City Hall um, and the Lord Mayor is always present and uh, Neve Toomey, the fab heritage officer, is always present. Um, uh, but we are delighted this morning to be joined by Neve and the Lord Mayor. Um, if I haven't met you before in my travels, uh, Kieran McCarthy is my name. I'm the coordinator of this project. Um, I'm also a city councillor, uh, but this project is in its 18th, 18th year. Um, so welcome to year 18 award ceremony. Um, and before we go any further, just to present um, online the winning, the, the winning projects, um, I'd like to introduce um, the Lord Mayor of Cork, uh, Councillor Joe Kavanagh, uh, to say a few words. Uh, so, Lord Mayor Joe, it's over to yourself. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. And um, I'm delighted to be here. And um, I'm, I'm very disappointed that we're, I'm not, I don't get the opportunity to meet you all in person. Um, but uh, it, this is a wonderful initiative, Discover Cork Schools Heritage Project 2021. And in, in its 18th year, um, I'd just like to pay tribute to my colleague, Councillor Kieran McCarthy, who I know is very passionate about our heritage in Cork. And um, every time we have a council meeting, um, you know, Kieran is always, is never slow to throw in a, a little historical ditty on various things that may come up in the agenda. I find them very educational, to be honest with you, because um, if you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going to. His, our history is critically important. And the building behind me here, uh, City Hall, was burnt down in 1920 and reopened in 1936. So we have a, a huge history, a, a very significant history in Cork. And looking through a lot of the projects that were done by so many of you, uh, it does, it does uh, buy into a lot of uh, the history of Cork. So well done to everybody who took time out and the teachers to participate on this wonderful event. And of course, congratulations to, Ke congratulations to Kieran and to Niamh, uh, for for your part in this and driving this forward. Um, it wouldn't happen really without somebody with the passion for Cork's heritage, such as what Kieran has. So thank you, Kieran, and thank you, Neil, and thank you for the opportunity to to be here and present at this, albeit online. Thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor, and uh, we're delighted you're going to be present over the next half an hour, forty minutes to go through the projects. Uh, the winning projects is very exciting. Um, I know that uh, I, uh, that Neave Toomey, our Fab Heritage Officer in, in Cork City Council, um, is with us as well. Uh, Neave, it's year 18, um, so you have the floor if you want to speak about how important this project is to, to schools and students in Cork City. Well, first of all, I'm delighted to be here today, and I'd like to take the opportunity um, to congratulate all of the prize winners this year um, from the Discover uh, Cork Schools Heritage Project. It's been a difficult year for everyone. Um, and I'm so impressed with the quality of all the submissions and particularly uh, the prize winners this year. Um, done tremendous work in a very difficult time. And I'd like to congratulate all the students and their teachers and parents for the contribution they've made this year. I'd particularly like to pay tribute to Councillor Kieran McCarthy and add my uh, congratulations to him uh, along with um, Lord Mayor. Um, Kieran has put in tremendous work this year um, and I'd really like to thank him very sincerely for that. I thank him every year, but particularly this year because without his, um, I suppose, ingenuity and imagination, um, this competition would not have stayed alive. And that's a genuine, that's a genuine comment. Um, he's gone over and above this year. And I just want to say, Kieran, that your contribution to this project and to many other projects that I'm involved in to do with heritage is greatly, greatly appreciated. And no more than the norm of this year when things have been so difficult. So I just want to say congratulations to everybody and well done. And I hope you enjoy the, the prize giving event today. Uh, thanks very much, Neil, for those kind words. Um, now, this year we actually had 25 schools involved um, and maybe just over 800 students involved. Not everyone made it to the end because of COVID. Um, there were challenges, um, but we did have the same high standard that we actually have every year. And so what I'd like to do over the next 30 minutes um, with the Lord Mayor um, in particular is to uh, uh, to run through um, our 
winners for, for this year from fifth to first place. So we've got a number of categories from fourth class um, all the way up into leaving cert um, into what I call the special awards for people who had like best models and best films. And I want to show I want to share with you some of I suppose my pictures of some of my favorite pages from our award winning uh, projects. And um, so let me share my screen. Um, and so in we go. Um, so welcome to the presentation. Um, so let's start um, with fourth class um, and in fourth class they're generally nine, ten years of age um, and our winners this year actually, a whole array of winners actually come from our Lady of Lords National School in Bannalock. So we're going to go from fifth place to first place um, in each category um, and in each category as well there's kind of usually individual and group um, and we'll ask the Lord Mayor perhaps to say a few words maybe on, on, on one or two of the projects that we kind of go through just to break up my voice as well with it. So let's start with fifth place in the fourth class individual category um, and fifth place goes to Sophie O'Callaghan um, and she did a project on Cork Opera House uh, and Cork Opera House um, began its life as a concert hall uh, way back over 160 years ago and Sophie did a really fab uh, model of Cork Opera House, um, the front entrance and a really well compiled kind of colourful project book so well done to Sophie. Uh, fourth place uh, in this category um, and we go to Heidi Manny um, again from Our Lady Lords National School um, and she did her project actually on Charles Fort and Kinsale. So Charles Fort is much older than the Opera House at 1680s in date, uh, but Heidi actually, during the the uh, the lifting of some of the restrictions, she went down to Charles Fort, she did a series of interviews with the tour guides and she put together a really cool video and a, and a really uh, cool fun facts um, set of pages. So well done to Heidi on, uh, on, on, on Charles Fort. Um, the third place um, in this particular category um, goes to Sari O'Neill um, from Our Lady of Lords National School and her project, project actually was on Nemo Rangers. Um, now, one of the reasons that she picked Nemo Rangers is that you can see from this page there in the bottom left, she says, uh, my quote, my grandfather is president of the club and I'm interested in its history. So Nemo Rangers runs in her blood um, and is very much her, her love has been passed down uh, from, her, her, from her grandfather and beyond that. So well done to Siri on coming uh, third in this category. Um, Second place in this category, uh, and we go back to Our Lady of Lords National School, um, and we go to Gina Desmond. Um, now, Gina did a really interesting project. Um, it's an oral history project, actually, with her grandmother. Um, but she picked her grandmother's brains and what life was like when her grandmother actually was growing up um, as a child. Um, so you're talking life in Cork in 1940s versus life in Cork today. Um, and so there's a a really interesting set of diary entries here. She, she, really, she did a lot of old page effects, a lot of color. Um, and so this was very well done and very well actually thought through. So well done to, to Gina. Um, and first place, drum roll uh, in this particular category, um, we go to Annika Crowley uh, Peter Zoo. Um, and her project uh, is on, this is called My McCurtain Street. Um, and again, um, Anita, Annika is actually within Our Lady of Lords National School in Banlock. So if you look very carefully at the centre of the page there, you'll see the Grosvenor Inn, um, and you'll see that um, this was a popular bar and being be owned by Annika's grandfather, and she gives some more information. You can see there's some really, really um, lovely old pictures, um, and so very much it's a walk through the street. Now I know Lord Mayor McCurtain Street is close to your heart. Um, I know you've been a lot of champion of it over the years. Um, do you want to say anything what's happening in McCurtain Street at the moment? Uh, or what are you, what are you uh, very proud of in your own work? Well, I suppose, Kieran, and, and in fairness to you, you've been a great supporter of the regeneration of, of the McCurtain Street area. And uh, if you think back maybe 15 years ago, um, the McCurtain Street area was dark and desolate and businesses, a lot of small businesses didn't last very long there because of the lack of footfall. But um, I sat down with traders over the years um, and, and to kickstart and in, with and a number of officials, very few actually, just one or two officials in City Hall. And eventually it gained traction and uh, we put lighting into, into McCurtain Street and businesses started to come on board, a marketing company came on board and it's now marketed as an eating and drinking quarter, very much a hospitality driven area. And um, it's now marketed as the Victorian quarter um, and it's internationally marketed as that. 
and uh, it's 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 a huge success now businesses are thriving there and businesses are trying to get in there and they can't it's a huge success so it's great to see the grosvenor i remember the grosvenor ill because my my very first job actually was a trainee manager in the metropole hotel okay. many years ago so well done to everyone well done to annika and well done to everybody and that's a super project and well done to everybody who participated by the way because once you participate you're a winner so well done yeah and you're right annika's project is a huge success and so well done to annika so we move on to the next category which is the fourth class group category um now the group category had difficulty working with each other this year as you'd imagine so they had to work from from home and then find some way of bringing their project books together um, so we're going to go from fifth to first place again. Um, so the array of projects here go from Shandon Bells to Mary Ellums to the Butter, Butter Museum. And so there's a good few topics here to, to just briefly explore. So fifth place in this category, uh, and we go to Sadie Collin and Julia Lenehan. Uh, and they're from Skull Nave Me Hall in Upper Glanmire. Um, and their project actually is on Shandon Bells. Um, and one of the greatest things about this project is that they did a lovely matchstick project of Shandon. You can see it there on the right of the slide. Um, and this is a very colorful project. So well done to Sadie and uh, Julia. Um, so fourth place in this category, um, and we go to Robert Horgan and Ethan Roach, um, and they're also from Skull Nave Me Hall in Upper Glanmire, um, and their project actually is on Cork City FC, um, which has a very rich winning history, um, but also it attracts large attendances at, at, all, at all of its matches. So um, Robert and Ethan did a series of interviews. Um, with family members and relatives um, that really love attending Cork City FC matches um, and it's a very well put together um, account of why Cork City FC matters in Cork City um, and in the wider region. Um, so third place in this category uh, and we go to Mairead Cashman uh, and Keelan Sneddon um, and they're from Skull Nave Me Hall and Upper Glanmire as well. Um, and Mairead and Keelan's project is actually on Mary Ellen's. Um, so, and they did a series of interviews, you can see here in the, in the page there on the right of the PowerPoint. Um, so they interviewed um, a lady called Peggy Cashman, who knew Mary Ellen's nephew. Um, and Mary Ellen, is, Mary Ellen is very much known for her saving of people um, from Nazi occupation in France um, during the 1940s uh, and is also famous in Cork because one of the city's newest bridges is named after Mary Ellen's um, and we might get the Lord Mayor to speak about that just when I get to the start of our get to winner number one in this um, category but number two um, our second place in this category, and we go to Charlotte Roach and Rose Kelleher um, and Ava Walsh. Um, and their project is actually called Father Matthew and Mary Ellens. Um, and they're actually from Skull Nave, Mihal, and Upper Glanmire. Um, now, this is a really interesting contrasting project because Father Matthew is from 1830s, 1840s, Cork. Um, and Mary Ellens is like from 1940, 1930s, 1930s Cork, and then 1940s kind of France um, and Spain. Um, and so some of the girls involved in this project, they look, they actually attend Fesh Machu every year. Um, Fesh Machu was set up in, the, in 1927, and it's a fantastic institution. And of course, we already spoke about the importance of Mary Ellens. And you can see actually, you can see over here in their project book and their opinion page, we think Mary Ellens was uh, an amazing and brave woman. Uh, and so do all who live actually in Cork City. I think that about Mary Ellens as well. Um, first place in this category, um, and we go all the way back to Skull Nave Me Hall in Upper Glanmire, um, and we go to Maria Hayes um, and Lily O'Connell, um, and their project actually is on the Butter Museum. Um, and they did they did some they did a really cool model you can see in the Butter Museum, um, and they also visited the Butter Museum, um, and they also experimented with butter, um, the creation of butter. If my memory serves me right, um, and it's it's just a really colourful and creative project. So well done to Maria and Lily. So Lord Mayor, in that category, there's a lot of your your favorite topics as well i know i know mary ellen's bridge is close to your heart i know there was there was some terrible vandalism there recently um but i know you like walking the city um i don't know if you have any favorite place in cork you like do you walk into the shandon area at all or do you walk kind of yeah yeah i'd i'd walk around the shandon area but i mean i would walk through the city center quite a lot particularly during lockdown and just to see how businesses are coping and see how people are coping really you know 
but um, I was really struck by um, the number of, of um, winners uh, <clears throat> who looked into the Mary Elms um, project <clears throat> and then the bridge, like when, when we named the bridge the Mary Elms Bridge, a lot of people were scratching their heads and asking themselves, who the hell is Mary Elms? And it brought history back to life. And that's what these types of projects are all about, Kieran. So this goes back to what I said at the very start. This is why these types of projects are so successful. You're bringing young people in, uh, recognizing the significance of such strong historical connections that our city has. So well done to the students. And the one other thing I, I was grasped at there, obviously being a, a, a councillor for Upper Clanmire, I was delighted to see uh, Skull Naeve Mihal uh, figuring so prominently uh, in the winner's enclosure. But you mentioned Fesh Machu. Uh, I, I personally, I went to Fesh Machu myself. Uh, as a seven-year-old, an eight-year-old, a nine-year-old, I was browbeaten into it and frog marched up to uh, Fesh Machu every single year. And um, not boasting, but I won a few medals, and cool. uh, which my mother has and refuses to give to me. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I might get my hands on them, they might, but they're worth about... Uh, 30, 20. They're over. They're about fifty years old now at this stage. So, well, Lord Mayor, well, well done on all the medals, and I hope you get them back soon. Um, now, of course, the people who are being read out here, they will actually collect their trophies. Uh, Brilliant. Actions lift um, in the next few weeks, um, and so they'll 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 hopefully get to hang on to their trophies, and they won't be hidden from them. Um, yes. But thanks for that. So, well done to everyone in the fourth class group category. Um, now, the fourth class category is very much like a welcome to the project. Um, um, and we're on now to what I call the, uh, the class project. Um, and there's a number of projects here that I want to comment on. Um, so these are where um, groups of six people or more can enter as a class project. Um, so we're going to go here from Boring Manor Road um, to St. Mary's Road. Um, and we'll have, a, we'll have a quick actually chat. Um, now we had um, five, six or seven entries to the fourth class category. One of the entrants actually doesn't appear here, but actually has won the best overall creative project. And we'll get to that, that particular class um, in a few minutes from Blarney. Um, so let's start with um, third place in this category. Um, and we go all the way to Rockborough School and Boring Manor Road. Uh, and they did a really fab project on Blarney Castle. Um, and they, they did this actually project online. They submitted their project on an online right reader app um, and was really well kind of put together. And they, they, they did a whole series of Lego models as well um, to do with Blarney Castle of different aspects to different rooms. So well done to that fourth class in Rockborough. Um, so on to the, uh, so Rockborough came third. So the, the second um, place in uh, this category, uh, and we go to Skull Maria Sumta, and we go to Miss Elliot's um, fourth class, and they did a really interesting, I would say very original project, um, parks and playgrounds in our locality. And um, that's the name of the project. Um, and so you can see here from the contents page I put up that they've explored everything from Fitzgerald's Park to the Lock to Tory Top Park to Toker Park. Um, they did then and now in opinions and models and publicity. Um, and they did some really interesting um, sketches. Um, and they probably, I mean, Fitzgerald's Park and the Lock are well known parks, but it's rare I actually get very good projects on Fitzgerald's Park and the Lock. Um, and this project is full of colourful drawings and I really like what they were trying to do. So well done to Fort Class and Sk Skull Maria Sumta uh, in Ballet Um And we have a joint first place in this category, Lord Mayor. The judges could not decide um, on which school to win. And uh, now, indeed, they actually are classes from the same school. So we go to St Vincent's Convent Primary School and St Mary's Road. Um, and we go to Miss Burns class, who were the who were the part of the joint first in this category, um, and they wrote a project called Great Cork Women, um, and they focused in in particular on Mother Jones and Mary Harris, who's got a, a legacy from the Shandon area, Mary Aikenhead and the Sisters of Charity, and again Mary Ellum has popped up again this year, which is fantastic, um, and I have to say as well, their last chapter is actually. Um, a chapter on their mums and their mothers uh, and how fantastic their mums are. Uh, but it was great to see that. So it went to whole, it went from historic to modern. So well done to, to Miss Burns uh, class, fourth class on that. And of course the other joint first in this category is just called Great Places, Great Places in Cork City. 
um, and it explored a whole series of elements. So you can see there Shandon Bells and St. Anne's Church, the North Infirmary, the Everyman Theatre, the Butter Exchange, the Firkin Crane, the North Cathedral. And of course, each one of those, you could actually have a project book just on their own. So they tried to bring them all together uh, and just pick out, pick out some of the more interesting um, facts and figures, but also it's full of drawings and perspectives and opinions. And, and so, and they came joined first. So our fourth class category very much is on great places and great Cork, Cork women and parks and playgrounds and the history of Blarney Castle. I don't know if there's anything there that kind of... Uh, um, takes your fancy Lord Mayor that you want to, to comment on. I know that you've been a big fan of Blarney Castle. It was one of the first places yeah. that you went out to when you became uh, Lord Mayor. I know yeah. you're a big community activist as well and you're, you like championing great places in Cork City. Well, yes, uh, Kieran, and you're right because <laughs> Blarney Castle is, is um, iconic really in terms of a tourist attraction. And I met um, Sir Charles Colthurst, who's the owner in, in Blarney Castle, and his wife, Car Lady Caroline, out there, and um, he just walked me through. Um, there's beautiful walks there. You can become a member. There's coffee shops. There's shops there. But it's nestled right in the middle of the beautiful village of Blarney. And I have to say, um, Blarney is something we should be shouting from the rooftops, really, uh, in terms of our tourist offerings in the city. We've Blarney Castle, we've got the Balancholic Regional Park. And then when you move into the city centre, I mean, you know yourself, uh, Kieran, your, your walks that you do um, are pretty iconic in themselves when you take in places and, and you know, tell people the history of things like the Butter Exchange, uh, Shandon Bells, and right up to the Victorian Quarter and around That's the city. Cool. And our city is, is baked with history. Yeah. And uh, these projects are an epitome of the history of our city. And it's, it's so refreshing to see the young people of Cork showcasing the history of our city. It means the history of our, and heritage of our city is really in good hands and I'm thrilled to see it. Cool, cool. Thanks, Lord Mayor. So let, let us let's, let us move it, mosey on um, or move on to our primary individual category. <coughs> um, and this we're going to go between um, Kilcray, Cras Kil Kilcray Castle and Friary, um, all the way to Christ the King Church and Turner's Cross. Um, so let's start with fifth place in this category, um, and we go to Lucy O'Mahony. Um, and Lucy did a project actually on Kilcray Castle and Friary. And so she did a fantastic model of um, the Kilcray Tower House, um, but actually within her project book, you can actually, you, you can find pictures of her exploring the Abbey. Um, and just, it, it's a the field work in this project is amazing so well done to Lucy. Um, fourth place in this category um, and we go to Beaumont uh, National School uh, and we go to Jack Brown um, and Jack actually did, her, did his project on historical landmarks of Cork. Um, so he explored things like Charles Fort, um, Nano Nagel, um, the English Market, Blarney Castle, um, and this is just a sample of maybe two of his pages. So you can see they're very, it's very well laid out. He likes sketching and drawing, and it's just it's a great project. So congratulations, Jack. Um, so the third place in this category, and we go to um, I think it's Elise Walsh or Elise Walsh. Elise Walsh. Um, my apologies if, I, if I've strangled that particular your your name, but this is a fantastic project on Spike Island, um, and so she kind of leads the. Um, the reader all the way from the creation of the project to, to um, from monastery times all the way through to becoming a fort in the 1700s and all the way through to become a military prison in the 1800s and well into the 1900s and nearly nearly to the present day very well laid out very late very well laid out so well done Elise on that um, and, and Elise she's from uh, Skullvera Junior School on Wellington Road um, so Second place in this primary individual category, and we go to a young man called John Toomey, and he's from Ballon Temple National School, and his project actually is on Jack Lynch. Um, so you can see, looking at the, the slide there on the right, he's got, it's full of colourful pages, and um, it's full of just covering the different chapters of Jack Lynch's life. Um, the first T-shirt to be from Cork, and of course you have the second T-shirt with Hall Martin at the moment. Um, but the interesting thing about this project is that 
John kind of zoomed in on places that were named after um, Jack Lynch. So he actually did take a, a huge interest in the Jack Lynch Tunnel and the engineering behind the creation of the Jack Lynch Tunnel and managed to get down there during non-restrictions and, and get an interview and get a tour and so on. So well done to John on that. Um, so first place in this category, um, and we go all the way to uh, Skull Vrida, uh, Eglantine National School on Douglas Road. Uh, and we go to a young lady called Ella O'Shaughnessy. So Ella, congratulations on your project on Christ the King Church. Um, what really struck me about this project and the judges as well is that not only did you do your own model of Christ the King Church made out of timber and lollipop sticks, but you also made reference to your granddad's model, which you did way, way back in time, um, which was a silver model of this very beautiful church from early 1930s Cork. Um, so we're, we're very, very blessed with the churches that we have in Cork. Um, and so congratulations, Ella, on that. So Lord Mayor, that was a, another whistle stop tour through a whole range of topics for this category. I don't know if any one of those, those topics kind of jump out, jump out at you. Have you got a favourite church in Cork, uh, Lord Mayor? Favourite church? We were blessed with churches in Cork. I mean, it's very hard to pick one particular church out because, as you know, we as councillors attend the North Cathedral and, of course, St Finbar's Church on a regular basis. My local church is Our Lady Crown Church in Mayfield or St Joseph's Church up in um, Oliall Road. But um, a couple of things jumped out at me there. And the first thing is one of your uh, prize winners there, one of the projects mentioned, Nano Nagel. Uh, my wife, uh, Lady Mayoress uh, Stephanie, her maiden name is Nagel, and she's got a sister called Nano. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm oh. always I, I, I'm always um, giving her a bit of ribbing. I'm saying to her, you know, uh, do you know there's a building downtown called after you? You're a very important <laughs> person, and she's got a great sense of humour, you know. And uh, but um, but yeah, so it is, it is an interesting one. And Spike Island was the other one because um, I grew up in Cove. And uh, we used to see Spike Island. I used to see Spike Island every day across the across the harbour. And I remember the times when it was, when it was actually a prison. The Department of Justice had it as a prison. And um, we had a terrible problem in Cork um, where our prisons were full. And so Spike Island was converted into a prison. And um, there was all kinds of problems there. And they eventually did away with it as a prison. And it's now an absolute fantastic tourist resort. Uh, it's a great tourist attraction. What they're after doing converting it and as you know yourself it's a an iconic um historical uh tourist attraction in right in the center and at the mouth of cork harbor so um yeah so well done to everybody and uh, who've actually Excellent. highlighted those issues thanks lord mayor uh, and so we go on to the next category so we're moving along quite um swiftly um, and this is the primary group category. So these are 11, 12 years old. Um, and we're going from um, Mary Ellams again, Lord Mayor, all the way to beautiful Black Rock. So let, let's start with fifth place. Um, and we're going to start with Liam Daly uh, and Hugh Johnson, uh, who are from Beaumont National School, Boys National School, uh, Mr. Horgan's class. Um, now Liam and Hugh did a project on Mary Ellams. Um, so again, it's a fantastic project where they worked tr through the history of Mary Ellums. Um, so Mary Ellums was originally from Ballon Temple, which is near Ballon Temple National School. And then they also kind of zone zoned in on the importance of the, of the bridge uh, in the present day. So let's go on to fourth place uh, to Calvin Heafy and Liam Hooley and Niall um, Magabinan, um, who were from Skullnave Me Hall in Upper Glen Moyer. Um, and Calvin and Liam um, and Niall, they did a project on Black Rock Castle. So it's a, it's a project book full of different kind of facts and figures, a lot of color and creativity, but the, the, the one of their last project pages ends, ends up with this. This is their model of Black Rock Castle, um, which is very well done. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's a mixture of kind of cardboard um, and other materials as well. So congratulations to the three boys. Um, third place in this category, and we go to Skull Vera Junior School on Wellington Road. Um, and we go to Chloe Bat and Ava Drew, Ruby May and Ruth Murphy. So Chloe, Ava, Ruby, Ruby May, Ro Ruby and Ruth, um, they did their project um, on the Royal Cork 
Cork Yacht Club, which last year kind of celebrated its 300th anniversary. Now, they didn't manage to get, unfortunately, due to COVID, didn't have the huge celebrations that were planned, but hopefully this year and the year, or the year after, you know, they had to kind of to celebrate the 300th anniversary. This is a very well put together project. There's a series of interviews as well within this particular project. Um, so congratulations to the, to the four girls um, on, this, on their work. So well done. Um, so, and second place in this category um, is a project on Nano Nagel Place, uh, Lord Mayor. So, Julie, Juliet McKenna uh, and Lauren Mills from Skullbury Junior School in Wellington Road. Um, and they actually did an interview um, as part of their project with Sorsha O'Brien, who's Education and Outreach Officer at Nano Nagel Place. And Sorsha gave them a, a virtual tour of the museum and garden. So, my, our, our thanks to Nano Nagel Place for helping out uh, Juliet and Lauren's project. But well done to Juliet and Lauren for taking the initiative and getting in contact with Sorsha and doing a really interesting project. Um, first place in this category, um, and we go all the way to St. Michael's National School in Black Rock. Um, we go to Meg Hart, Barry, Abby Foley, and Lily O'Donoghue. So Meg and Abby and Lily, their project is called Beautiful Black Rock. Um, and within this project, it's very colourful. So this is just a sec this is just a page for another Black Rock castle section. They also did the pier, the marina, and the Atlantic Pond in their project. And it's just, it's very colourful, it's well put together. Um, and it's it's very much nearly a, a tourist guide as well, nearly in nature. Um, and so that's that's the primary group category. So we went from with Black Rock, Nano and Eagle, the Royal Cork Yacht Club, Black Rock Castle, and Mary Ellen's. Um, anything there kind of catch your interest, Lord Mayor? Um, the Royal Cork Yacht Club, uh, Kieran. Um, as you know, its history it goes way way back. Uh, it was first; it's the oldest yacht club in the world. Uh, it, it goes back; it was set up back in Cove actually um, and what's in there now at the moment where the Yacht Club used to be is, <clears throat> is an art centre called the Sirius Art Centre um, in Cove so yeah it is, it is a magnificent uh, but it's, it's wonderful to see um, Black Rock Castle which is hugely significant and I know it's very close to your heart and it's on your doorstep down there it's, uh, there's some fantastic projects on that and with the uh, forthcoming development of the Docklands and the Marina Park area over the next, over the coming years, um, Blackrock Castle uh, and, and everything it has to offer will uh, be showcased in a far more positive light. It won't be as isolated as it is uh, because that's going to be hugely significant in the coming years. So well done to everybody on that. The projects are absolutely fantastic. So well done. Okay, thanks, uh, Lord Mayor. So well, let's go on to the next um, category, um, if I may. So this is the Junior Cert Individual category. Now, unfortunately, with COVID, we didn't get a group um, category this year with the Junior Certificate, but we got loads of Junior Certificate Individual category projects. And these are what I call the top four. Um, so we're going from the life of John Morrow and Morrow Mills to the three Lord Mayors of, of 1920. Mm -hmm. So let's... Uh, Go, let's go on. So fourth place in this category, and we go to Alex Brown. He's with the North Monastery History Club, uh, Mr. Ryan's um, History Club, and he did this project on Morrow's Mills, which is this enormous um, woolen mills. Um, the building is still there in Douglas, um, and Alex kind of explored the, the Morrow's legacy actually on Douglas. So well done to Alex um, on that. Um, so third place in this category, and we go to Christ the King Secondary School in South Douglas Road, um, and we go to Kawar um, Bilal. Now, hopefully I've pronounced that, that, that name um, right. Um, um, but um, Kawar did our project on the burning of Cork. Um, and so you can see there, there's an opinion page there on the right uh, where she says the burning of Cork was... Um, it was tragic, uh, tragic. She felt so sorry for the people living through that time. Um, and then she also used some kind of technology to bring her project book alive, but very well done to um, Kawar for her uh, for her very interesting work. Um, number two, our second place in this category, um, and we go to Luke O'Leary. Uh, and Luke is actually from Cloche de Cree 3 on Capitol Road, Turner's Cross. And he did actually the history of Nemo Rangers. Um, so Nemo, Nemo Rangers actually is a, 
a, an amalgamation of two clubs, one called Nemo, one called Rangers, and they were they were brought together in the early 1920s. Um, and this is Luke's project very much explores his connection to Nemo Rangers, but also why Nemo Rangers is a fab club within the city and has won many um, county championships and is always um, there amongst uh, the winners, um, winner enclosures, we say every decade. Um, so well done to Luke on this fab project. Um, and first place in this category, um, and we go to the Nortman History uh, Club and the North Monastery History Club, and we go to Ryan O'Sullivan. Um, and Ryan's project is actually on the three Lord Mayors um, of 1920 um, uh, of Cork City. Um, and now the interesting thing about um, Ryan is that he did explore the like Tomas McCurtain, Terence McSweeney, and also probably the forgotten Lord Mayor, uh, Don Logo Callaghan. And you can see there on the right, he did a, a fantastic interview with A. Quinlevin from UCC, uh, who recently or just before Christmas brought out a book called Forgotten Lord Mayor. I know Lord Mayor, you were also instrumental in kind of pushing for that book to be released. And I, I think you were there, you were there for the official launch, um, yes. socially yeah. distanced. Do you want to describe how that went or what you think about the book? Well, the book is fantastic. It was uh, written by A. Quinlivan of UCC. And, you know, I think it's always important to, as I said at the very outset, if we don't know where we come from, we don't know where we're going. And I think this, this the history of our city um, is of critical importance. And, and the burning of Cork is, is critically important. And there were very tumultuous times, as you know. And, um, you know, we celebrated the burning of Cork and I know there was a previous project there and, and in this category that celebrated that and all that kicked off it was one of the one of the incidents that kicked that off was, would have been the ambush at Dillon's Cross and you were there yourself um, here at the unveiling of the plaque up at Dillon's Cross. So it's important that we showcase uh, where we come from and the history of our city and these projects go an awful long way. I think this history all needs to be documented and needs to be uh, you know, our, our children need to be taught uh, the history and where we came from and the tumultuous times of 1920s, as I'm not sure it's taught as well as it should be within the current uh, history curriculum in schools. Okay, thanks very much um, for that, Lord Mayor. Uh, and congratulations on all your work as well in championing um, the War of Independence from 100 years ago. And um, so let's move on. Um, so we're going to, we're, we're jumping now to the Leaving Cert. So category, for the most part, um, these are secondary school students, are, um, they're transition year students, they're fourth year, so they're 16, 17 years old. So we've got two winners here. So two winners made the standard um, of, of winning. Um, so we're going to go from Christian Brothers College to Christian Brothers College. So we've got two winners from uh, CBC from Wellington Road. So let's start with the first one, um, which is a project on Tom Barry. Um, from the War of Independence. Um, and we go to Rowan uh, Ranga. Um, and Rowan's project is very much on the Crossberry ambush of March 1921. And it zones in or zooms in on his great granduncle, Matt O'Sullivan, uh, who fought in the battle. Um, and uh, Rowan kind of outlines um, how Matt got on in the battle and so on. Um, so congratulations to Rowan, Rowan for championing um, his great granduncle uh, and congratulations on a fab project. Um, and first place in this category, um, and it is from Christian Brothers College in Wellington Road, and we go to Senen Scaltus. Um, and Senen's project is called Kindred Spirits, how and why as Cork people um, can support the indigenous people of the United States. Um, now, this project um, is based on a relief program that was sent from the US to Cork during the time of the Great Famine. So the Choctaw Nation um, of the southeastern states of America were so moved by the plight of the, of the Irish people during the famine, Lord Mayor, um, that they actually sent over $170 uh, um, from their really very little resources to aid those starving in Ireland. And in recent years, um, Cork County Council um, developed a whole series of sort of modern monuments, and one of the modern mon monuments was actually dedicated to the Choctaw Nation um, and their relief for, for Cork people way back in the 1840s. So congratulations to Senan for championing that. Um, so we've got, uh, in that particular category, we had War of Independence, the Great Famine. Um, so have you, uh, have you any, an interest in the Great Famine? Have you, uh, Lord Mayor, have you... <clears throat> well, I suppose, you know, um, the one thing that uh, seems to be touching us here is, is our connection between um, 
these people in the United States, the Choctaw Nation and so on, and immigration um, and the Irish nation as such, and the significant part that the Irish people played in immigration. Having grown up in Cove, um, you know, um, the Deepwater Quay where the liners come in uh, on, a, on a regular basis, um, that used to be um, an area where the post office used to send the, the Killarney out to the liners at Roaches Point with the mail and the post and so on. It's now um, uh, history, historical, the Queenstown project, I think it's called. But the last thing, that uh, last piece of Ireland that many people would have seen going back in the past uh, when they headed to the United States and so on, uh, creating connections between us and the United States, which is highlighted in these projects, would have been this, the spire of Cove Cathedral. So there's very strong connections between Ireland and the United States, and it's wonderful to see the Choctaw, and it's, it's a super monument down in Middleton as you drive down the, the dual carriageway, and you can see it in on the left just before the roundabout, and it's um, wonderfully uh, built and showcased um, and highlighting the gesture that they made, a significant gesture, and it's great to see the students of Christians, where both my boys, by the way, went to school. Um, uh, it's a wonderful school when it comes to um, encouraging these types of projects. So well done, everybody. Well done. Thanks, Thanks, Kate. Thanks Lord Mayor. So we'll go on to the Leaving Cert um, group category, the Leaving Certificate group category. Um, we had a lot of entries actually here, a lot of great entries, um, in particular Skull Vera Senior School, uh, Mr. Daly's class, students there did very well uh, in, in, in this particular project uh, and just really, really great work. So let's start with the fifth place in this category um, and we go to a project from Abby O'Sullivan and Isabel McElwin and Sally Bolin. Abby, Isabel and Sally's project um, is called COVID and the Spanish Flu in Cork. So this is very much a now and then project um, where it looks at the Spanish flu in Cork and how it ripped through the slums of Cork and society in Cork versus how COVID is getting on in the present day. Um, and they did a really interesting model, which is a model of masks that you actually wear from the present day and it's of Shandon. So it's, it, I, love, I love the symbolism of this, uh, of this particular model as well. So well done to, to Abby and Isabel um, and Sally on this particular project. Um, fourth place in this category, um, it was from Ava Murphy and Emma Brett um, and Alice Nel Nelligan um, and the project is called The Life of Cork Opera House. Um, so they zoomed in in particular on the earliest aspects of the, of the Opera House where it was called the Cork Athenium, which opened in 1855 as a concert hall. People like Charles Dickens did readings there in the 1860s and then became uh, Cork Opera House in 1877. And of course then Cork Opera House, that, that, that gorgeous building was, uh, the first building was burnt down uh, in 1955, rebuilt open 1965. And of course we're very, very lucky that with the Opera House that we have today, fantastic staff fantastic management and that very much comes across in Ava's Emma's uh, and Alice's project and um, that they've actually um, penned for the project this year so well done. Um, so third place in this category um, and again it's Skullvira Senior, Senior School in Wellington Road and we go to even um, Fitzgerald and Ali McCarthy and Evie and Ali's uh, project is called Irish slash English Historical Harbour Relations and the Economic Importance for Cork. Um, now we're talking maybe a series of maybe over 20 pages that actually that look like th this sort of a spread Lord Mayor on the right. Um, very well laid out um, and very much drawing in from uh, Cork Harbour in the 19th century to Cork Harbour in the present day in terms of cruise liners, the importance of places like Whitegate Oil Refinery, um, and it's very well put together and it's very creative. So, and they also did a, a fantastic little video as well of them actually on the water exploring some of the outer harbour by Roaches Point. So well done to, uh, to Evine and Ali. So second place in this category, and it's a project uh, by Lucy Brown and Amy Brett and Robin DC on the area of Shandon. Um, and there's a family connection by one of the girls here. So um, again, they went to around Shandon and they created their own tour um, and took in everything from St. Anne's Church Shandon uh, to the North Cathedral. Uh, and of course, St. Anne's Church Shandon is coming up to its 300th anniversary um, in two years time, I think. Um, so there'll probably be huge celebrations up in Shandon and they kind of touch upon that within their project book. And there's, there's some really lovely artwork and really great set of pictures in this project book as well. Um, so first place in this category 
Um, we go to Isabella uh, Chagini, uh, Roisin Tolan, and Charlotte O'Brien. Um, so Isabella, Roisin, and Charlotte, their project is actually called 100 Years of Women's Rights in Cork, um, where they chart the very much the rise and fall of women's rights from the 1920s, so from the, um, the vote, and that was given to people way back 100 years ago, to women 100 years ago, all the way through to the present day. It's very well laid out, it's very well presented, and um, there's a fantastic argument running through it in terms of equality. Um, I just want to, it's a very original project, and my major congratulations to Isabella Roisin um, and Charlotte. Um, Lord Mayor, so th those are the, the five winners uh, for leaving Sir Group category. Any of those kind of jump out at you? Is there anything there that you uh, you like? Champ I know you champion so much in Cork and so many interests. Yeah, I mean, women's rights obviously is hugely important and hugely significant because it played a huge part in, in making Cork the city it is today. But one thing I suppose that did jump out at me and uh, is, is our harbour. Um, and it was a project there based on Cork Harbour. And Cork Harbour as you know, is the second largest um, harbour, natural uh, harbour in the world uh, behind Sydney. And it's something that uh, we're starting to get our heads around now because with Brexit, and we're going to become hugely, hugely significant from a commercial shipping perspective and a tourist uh, shipping perspective um, with Brexit and uh, the shipping lanes from coming from the West, coming from the United States. So it's wonderful to see that being highlighted and um, I always love listening to you, Kieran, because every time I come on with you, I learn something new. I never knew uh, Charles Dickens uh, did a reading in Cork Opera House, and I sit on the board of Cork Opera House, you know. So it's always wonderful to learn something new. And the day you get out of bed and you don't learn something new, you may as well go back to bed. So cool. thank you for that. Thanks, Katie. Lord Mayor. And I, and I think all of these, these project books as well is about learning something new, new skills, yeah. new talents. Um, and I, as we're working through as well, um, some of the individual categories, um, they win cameras, digital cameras. Some of the group categories win um, book tokens, book vouchers, and so on. Um, and people will be able to collect those, um, I suppose, in, in a few weeks' time once the restrictions r restrictions actually lift uh, a bit more. But we're going on to what I call the um, the special categories. So these are projects that really. <laughs> They really stood out, Lord Mayor, uh, yep. and they kind of get yep. their own individual award. So the Best Creativity Project Award, um, that's what we're going to go on to. It goes to Fort Class in Skull Creases and Blarney, and they did their project on Blarney Castle Estate and Surrounds. So this is their one of their project pages. Um, so this is a mixture of different topics. So the um, Blarney Railway Station, the Square, um, a milk cart, um, and a then and now. But the best thing about this project, and one of the reasons they won Best Creativity Project, um, the award itself, which is a, a perpetual trophy as well that the class will get to keep for, um, for the year, is the film they made um, on Blarney. There's so much fun in it, there's so much energy in it, there's so much enthusiasm in it. I'd like to thank the class for their work. Uh, they really kind of uh, brought the story of Blarney uh, alive. So congratulations to all the team involved um, in the uh, the best creativity project award. Um, uh, and that, as I said, goes to Skull Crease, Issa and Blarney, to Fort Class, uh, to Miss O'Connell's class. So congratulations. Um, the best film project award. So as part of this process, Lord Mayor, uh, you are actively encouraged to do a model or a film. Um, so we get a mixture of short films, they're usually two, three minutes long, um, or, and some, we get a lot of models as well. Now, unfortunately, with the films, I can't show, to, show them to you because there, there are young people kind of involved with them, um, and, and, and this is a, also going out on YouTube. But I would like to highlight just um, two films in particular that kind of really struck me as really interesting. Um, so one is a, a sec the second place um, in this category, the Best Film Award, goes to Kira O'Brien and Sienna Spratt. Uh, from St. Michael's National School uh, in Black Rock. Uh, and their project um, is a then and now on Black Rock. Um, but they actually did a whole series of, of themselves standing in front of, uh, of um, the church in Black Rock, the Atlantic Pond, just telling the story of kind of what was actually behind them. They're like news reporters. So congratulations to Kira and Sienna on that. And then the first place um, in this category goes to Holly Charles uh, from Eglantine National School in Douglas Road. And her project on the English market. So this is a series maybe of something like two short films where she works with her mum in particular um, or her guardian to um, to interview shopkeepers in the English market. Um, 
and and, and they and that's uh it was just really fab and very creative and, and it very much gets to the essence of what the English market um, is about as well. Um, and I'll just do one more um, special project before I let you back in, Lord Mayor. So the Best Transport Project Award, which is the Air Nord Air and Perpetual Trophy, um, goes to Bobby Heffernan, who did a project on the old Cork Black Rock and Passage Railway Line. And he, um, Bobby is in Beaumont Boys National School. And this is just... Um, he very much did a lot of field work and um, there's a film connected to this um, and it very much is his journey um, and exploration of the old railway line. Now I know Lord Mayor you love walking, do you get to go walk to kind of the Black Rock area, the old railway line walk, Are you uh, do you get that far? No I don't get, my wife does, in fact she's out walking, Lady Maris is out walking at the moment, um, but she does walk down under quite a lot and I know my son <clears throat> does go down to the marina quite a lot. Uh, walking and so on but you obviously these days you have to stay within your 5k uh, so that's of critical importance but you know it strikes me um, we have a lot of talent in our midst in our schools and it's wonderful to see the the creativity and the imagination uh, of, of of the young people uh, in our schools that can make films because to make a film as you well know being a historian Kieran, you have to do a lot of research and uh, when you do research you learn an awful lot. And it's very interesting to see there's two castles showcased, Blarney Castle and Black Rock Castle, which are now very iconic on the skyline of Cork City, Black Rock and the, and the southeastern um, mouth of the harbour as such, um, you know, at the end of the river, at the edge of the city. And it was Blarney in, inland, inside in Blarney, the village of Blarney. And it also showcases a lot of the businesses and the history of Blarney. So people, these students would have had to do an awful lot of research to put all this together. So when you do research, you learn an awful lot about where you've come from and you learn the history of our city. And it's yeah. wonderful. Students, the students in our schools have a passion for history, which I, I have huge passion for history. And I'm always loving to learn the history as such. Thank cool. Thank you. Thank you. So let's do the, the, the next five kind of special awards. So um, we go to the Community Heritage Award, um, which is always about someone who really champions the topic and really kind of brings the topic to the wider public. Um, and we go to Amira Admit, uh, who's from Toker Girls National School. Um, and Amira did her project on the burning of Cork. Um, but one of the things that she did is that she went on the, the school Tanoi system and actually spoke about the project to the rest of the school and why it's important. So my sincere congratulations, that's not easy to do. So my sincere congratulations to Amira on really pushing the boat out with her project. Um, the War of Independence Commemoration Project Award um, goes to Nina Murphy. Um, who's from Ballon Temple National School um, and her project is actually on a, on a grand relative of hers who, were, who was involved in the Dripsy ambush. Um, this is a very colourful project. Um, it does zone in on a grand relative, um, Dennis Murphy, who was involved in the Dripsy ambush. The Dripsy ambush happened on the 28th of January 1921. So we've just passed the centenary anniversary of that. But this is very well put together. It's very well thought through and it's very personal. Um, so well done to Nina on that. Um, so the, no, the Charity and History Award, and um, we go back to Toker Girls National School and we go to Siobhan Lyons, um, whose project is called Dogs for the Disabled. So she talks about the story of the Dogs for the Disabled charity, but also she's a, a major champion of Dogs for the Dis Disabled. Um, and every now and again, we get a really fab project on the importance of charity work in the city. And this is one of these fab projects that actually has emerged. So. Congratulations, Siobhan, on a really great project. Um, so the we'll go on to another uh, special award. Uh, these are projects that kind of stand out um, and deserve their own award and their own right. Um, this is the Sport and History Project Award. Um, so it's like the, the best project on, on sport in the city uh, on any aspect of sport. And it goes to Reen O'Donnell. Um, he did the Rockies through the years. He's from Beaumont National School in Beaumont, Mr. Horgan's class. Um, and very much um, he runs through that, like the first recorded president of the club was Edward Fitzgerald, who was Lord Mayor of Cork for three years, 1901, 1902 and 1903, was known as Sir Edward, um, was also involved in the Great Exhibition, Lord Mayor on what's now the site of Fitzgerald's Park. 
But the thing about Rian is that the rock is runs in his blood. And it, when you read his project, you can see his passion and his enthusiasm. Um, and so my sincere congratulations to Rian on this very personal piece of work. Um, the Heritage Game Award, Lord Mary, you're probably going to be interested in this. Um, in the last few years, and um, people have moved away from creating models to interactive models. And we actually are getting game boards uh, on different aspects of um, cork buildings in particular. Um, so the second place for the best game board and project book that was actually created on an aspect of cork. So the first one is actually from Gaspar uh, Napora, uh, who's from Beaumont National School. Um, and go and it's called murder at black rock castle uh, and you can see the game board there in the top right and the the project does do the history of black rock castle as you'd expect but also then it's like how to win and how to solve the murder that a uh, murder so he created this murder story in black rock castle so my, my congratulations to gasper on this very creative piece of work um, and actually first the, the the best board game that we actually had this year um, is called where are the golden trumpets and it's a project book that's based on St. Finbar's Cathedral and that fantastic golden angel. You mentioned St. Finbar's Cathedral earlier on, Lord Mayor. This is a, an epic piece of work in terms of the research got into it, but you, you can get the sense of the board game that she actually created as well on the top right. And she created its own box. It comes with its own box full of, diff, of tokens and, and things to play with. Um, so well done to Grace Murray uh, from Skull Breda, Eglinton on Douglas Road. Uh, and Miss Finn's class there, so well done. Um, so let's go on. Um, so the best living through history project. Um, we go to Skullvira Junior School. Um, now, Lord Mayor, the theme this year, and every year I put a theme on the project, and this year's theme is called Living Through History. Uh, and you, you are asked um, to maybe reflect on the theme. Um, the one person who really went for it was Katie Dwan. Uh, from Skullvera Junior School on Wellington Road. And she kind of did a project on my experience of daily life during the COVID-19 um, pandemic in Cork. Um, unfortunately for Katie, Katie, she lost the relative um, during the, the past year. Um, so my condolences to Katie and her family, but this is an epic project. It's, it's, it's thick, there's, a, there's color in it, there's creativity in it. <laughs> it. There's a fantastic model that's going with it. Um, and it's well deserving of the best living through history project award. So my congratulations. So Lord Mayor, there's a lot there in the last six or seven categories. Um, I know if you want to comment on, on any of them, I know you're big into community and tidy tongues and kind of getting people involved in their community. I don't yeah. know if you want to speak about that in any, in any shape or form and the importance um, of community and history. Yeah, well, community is, is critically important. And you know me long enough, Kieran. you know that community comes before anything. Um, and uh, as a public representative, that's where that's where I come from. And I'm just fascinated by the number of projects, the type of projects that are there. And there's one in particular there that kind of uh, jumped out at me, um, <clears throat> the history of the Rockies. And there's been quite a few um, sporting teams running through uh, a lot of the projects um, this morning. And um, as you know, um, you might have seen it on the sporting agenda. I have a proposal going through council at the moment requesting that we, we look at setting up a Cork Sports Museum. And I know that's something that you'd be very passionate about and you probably play a, lot, play a strong part in, in, in helping to put it together. But I think it's something that we should look at in Cork, um, setting up a sporting museum, because there's no other city or county in Ireland that has the sporting uh, history that Cork has. Uh, and not just one sport, right across the whole spectrum of sports. And it's wonderful to see so many young people uh, researching the sporting um, prowess of the various clubs, whether it is their local club or whether it is various other clubs. But, you know, it's all history and it's where we came from, from a sporting perspective. And as, as a city and as a county, there's no other city or county in the country will come next to near Cork. And I'm not being biased just because I'm Lord Mayor of Cork. I, that's a realistic statement. And that's why I've requested that we put together a sporting Cork Sports Museum. Excellent. And I think it's something that I, I know that you strongly support that given your passion for the history of our city. It's one thing having showcasing the history of our city from, from a, a political and, and socio-economic uh, e perspective, but sport plays a huge part in people's lives. 
and it kind of forges the people and communities and a city that we have in so many different ways. And I think it's critically important that we, we, we make a right good effort to showcase this on a proper and professional way. And that, that's what I'm requesting. And you'll see it coming before you anyway on, on the agenda. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks, thanks very much, Lord Mayor. And you, you are, we, we got some really fab projects on sport this year. And congratulations to everyone uh, to, uh, for trying to get their head around the history of sport, because sometimes there are no books. You're just dealing with newspaper articles. Sometimes it's hard to hit, tell the history of sport in, in, our, in, our, in our great city. Um, but so that, that's, that, that's uh, most of the, the majority of the, the special projects or, or project books that really kind of just stood out. Um, and in our last category, um, Lord Mayor, um, so actually that is uh, Katie Dewan's um, page actually there. You can see it's, you can see how colorful it actually is. You can see the different kind of sections. Um, so congratulations to Katie. Um, and the best overall school project uh, goes to Eglantine National School on Douglas Road. I, I think I probably received the bones of 50, 60 individual projects on different aspects of Cork. So my major congratulations, my, my thanks as well to the three teachers involved. Um, but overall, my thanks to all the teachers actually involved this year. So I can I can stop my share and we can just revert back to ourselves. Um, now, the project, Lord Mayor, is, is funded by Cork City Council. Uh, we get a lot of help um, from the Lifetime Lab or the old Cork Waterworks experience. They do a lot of administration. They mine the projects, um, um, for the, mine the projects uh, for the project itself. Um, there's also additional prizes by myself. Uh, and uh, learn at Lego education um, and hopefully as the weeks go on we'll be able to, able to present um, pro present the prizes um, and the and the book vouchers and digital cameras and other elements perpetual trophies as the weeks kind of go on so that is 2021 set of winners Lord Mayor uh, my sincere thanks for joining us um, today uh, my thanks to Neve Toomey uh, the heritage officer for joining us earlier on that's a whistle stop uh, tour as well lord mayor through uh, cork history um and i look forward to um starting the 2022 edition uh, in september of this year uh and hopefully i'll be able to get around to schools more so than doing virtual workshops from earlier on um my thanks as well to parents uh, and to families um i reckon lord mayor that if i get 800 students involved every year, you can multiply that by a factor of four or five. So we are dealing with probably a population of 4,000 people upwards who actually are involved in this project um, every year. Uh, not including animals, cats and dogs that appear in pictures in people's projects as well. Um, and so that's a sizable population. It's nearly a suburb of the city actually involved in this school's heritage project. So here's the 19th um, year. So thanks very much to everyone. I'll, I'm going to stop recording though. So Lord Murphy, if you want to wave and then I'll just stop uh, recording.